COVID and anxiety, probably the two most frequent topics uh, for the past year. The pandemic brought a sudden and dramatic change to our lives, to the way we used to see the world, to the things we took for granted. And for that, anxiety disorders have been spiking all over. For that, I'd like to uh, bring you some awareness on what anxiety is, so you can approach it uh, effectively uh, and in a healthy way. Now, first of all, there's not one type of anxiety, there are several. This awareness is crucial because conditions of different nature require different approaches. Uh, now, from a psychoanalytic perspective, uh, anxiety is a state of emotional tension uh, that is triggered by the idea of a future threat. So it's not a reaction to a, a tangible and immediate threat, it's the reaction to the idea of a future threat. The fears implicit in anxiety are the product of our mind's less evolved parts. Therefore, uh, the, that experience may sometimes seem irrational or illogical. Now, since these uh, feelings are so intrusive, they tend to blur our ability to think and our perception uh, of what is our inner world and what is the external world uh, tends to get a little bit blurry. So it, some, it's common to have a hard time understanding what, what is our imagination and what is a real threat. Another aspect that aggravates our ability to think is uh, the physical response that that emotional tension triggers. Uh, it's very common to feel butterflies in the stomach, a hard time breathing, a hard time concentrating. And those uh, physical symptoms, they tend to draw our attention from the original feel feeling that triggered anxiety. And that feeling is a sense of loss of control. To our mind, it's easier um, trying to control uh, physical symptoms that are actually in our bodies, uh, in our reach, uh, than trying to understand and regain control of a situation or uh, an event that actually uh, uh, caused us to feel overwhelmed. To make matters worse, when we share this feeling with someone else, what's the most common response? It's not that reassuring. So, to add up to this uh, previous uh, sense of lack of control, now there's also a, a feeling, a sense of helplessness. So, it's a combination of uh, feeling a lack of inner resources and external resources. In some extern extreme situations, uh, there's an, uh, another uh, feeling that makes the, the experience uh, really terrifying. It's the feeling, the, the fear of death. Now, the pandemic uh, has been so uh, uh, dramatic to anxiety disorders because it actually triggers uh, our three worst primitive fears. Uh, the fear of losing control, uh, the, feeling, the fear of being helpless, and the fear of death. How to deal with anxiety, you ask me? Well, the big consequence of anxiety is that since it invades us with such primitive fears, our, our ability to think tends to get a bit crippled. So, the most common response to, to anxiety uh, usually is trying to engage in strategies either to block or avoid thinking, because thinking becomes a very painful process. Now, that can uh, give some short-term sense of relief, but in the long term, if you're not thinking, you're actually not thinking, you're not actually uh, elaborating on your reality uh, and you're not uh, regaining conscience uh, of the difference between your imagination, your worst fears and what's actually happening in your life. So, the, the response to anxiety is, isn't actually in reactions to the anxiety peak, but is actually in the prevention, in reorganizing and uh, restructuring your ability to think. So, as a good psychoanalyst, I won't share with you strategies to avoid anxiety and to avoid thinking, but I'll share some elements to actually help you think organically and freely and more confidently about your specific life circumstances. The threats of the pandemic are real, so some emotional tension is natural. The problem comes when these uh, instinctive fears take over our mind and our ability to think. Uh, and what happens is our minds gets flooded with these worst the possible uh, case scenarios that kind of freeze us and make us unable to uh, react and to adapt to whatever are the specific conditions of our lives. 
uh, it's somehow normal that this happens because usually we're not used to think uh, in such extreme scenarios, in such extreme emotions. And actually in our daily, daily lives, we are constant, constantly bombarded by uh, news all over the world of the worst possible uh, case scenarios. So it, it gets really hard to make this distinction between what's this sum of uh, all the possible worst case scenarios and what's actually the, the specific problems that we have uh, in our lives. So probably what concerns you the most right now is your professional situation, uh, your close relationships and your health. So the challenge here is actually trying to stop and think. Think in each one of these uh, areas of your life, what are the challenges and what can you do to adapt and prevent um, a future degradation of what's actually happening right now. So the more aware you are of uh, what's actually uh, worrying you in your life and how you can adapt, uh, the more secure you'll feel, the more reassured you will feel and the less anxious you will feel. And to finish, as I often say, few things in life are uh, either permanent or impossible to overcome. So stop, think and be resilient. See you soon.